Hello and welcome to episode 3 of this self-hosting series. Today I've decided we will be going th through GANIC. Now what is GANIC? GANIC is a lightweight subsonic server implementation. What is that? Well, uh, you want to stream your music to your phone or to really anywhere from your server. This allows you to do it. Now there, as you're going to see is a familiar theme as I go through all these different services, is GANIC is just one of many, many solutions available for this. So if we go back and reference the awesome self-hosted GitHub page here, and we go down to media streaming, audio streaming. We can see there are a whole lot of different services available. One of the ones that I've used in the past was AirSonic, and AirSonic was really good. I'll have to say that the front end for it was pretty dated, but from the last time I looked, they were very close to a new, updated, and improved, more modern front end for it. The reason I moved away from sub or, uh, I'm sorry, AirSonic was because it's written in Java and it takes up a lot of system resources. Now, if you have an actual full-fledged server, that should not matter, but since I'm running my services on a single board computer, I need to try to keep my services as efficient as possible. So I decided to move on from AirSonic because it was by far and away the most resource intensive app running on the device. Uh, some of the other ones I have was looking at before I moved to Gonic was FunkWhale. That seemed like a pretty decent one. And Mopity. MPD, I've used in the past, I've liked it, um, and Navidrome, which this seems to be a, another very popular one. It's more polished front end, and it's compatible with Subsonic and Airsonic, so it's going to work with like Ultrasonic and Subplayer and any other Subsonic client. But I decided to go with Gonic. That's what I'm trying now. I may switch to a, one of these other ones or try them out again in the future to see how they've progressed. But for now, we're going with Gonic, which is extremely basic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. So this is it. This is Gonic. This is all you get. One page of settings. That's it. So let's go through these. Uh, you got your stats, which tells you how many artists, albums, tracks. It has scanned. Uh, it has a last FM scrabbler. You can set up different users. This shows you the recent folders it has scanned. Uh, you can set up transcoding device profiles and upload playlists. That's it. There's no player, there's no other settings. What you see here on this one single page is what you get. Now, why do you want to use Guy? Well, it allows you to store all of your music on your server and be able to access it from anywhere, from your phone, from other computers, um, no matter where you are, as long as you have an internet connection and you can have a way to connect back to your server, uh, you will be able to stream your music. And so you do not need to use your local device storage on your phone and fill it up with all your music files. You just get to have access, complete access, to your whole music collection. So, let's go ahead and install Gonic. 
So clicking the Ghanic link took us to a GitHub page where it goes over its features and how to install it. So you can install from source, but what we're going to do is install with Docker. It says the image is available on Docker Hub. We can click on that link. It's going to take us to hub.docker.com where it likely has very similar information here. So uh, now I do not have Docker Compose set up and this is giving us a Docker Compose file. For whatever reason, OMV, the version of OMV that I'm using does not have an up-to-date Docker Compose. So these Docker, I've just gotten used to running Docker run commands and I've been archiving the commands that I run in order to do updates in DocuWiki. So that's how I'm used to doing it. And I, I know I need to probably take an, another look into Docker Compose, but let's go ahead and SSH into the server and get a Docker run command going here. Now, as we start setting up Docker containers, it might get a little repetitive because it, it aside from a few exceptions where we may have to link to other containers it's all pretty much the same but that's what makes docker great it's super easy to get these services set up and not have to worry about how they are going to run as long as we make sure we set up a few volume mounts um, and maybe a, a variable or two the service is going to run perfectly so again let, we will start getting this command set up we're going to take the information from this docker compose file to create a, a docker run command it is sudo docker run we're going to put d for detached that's going to make it detach from the terminal so it's not outputting it's not putting its output into our terminal and it, we're going to be able to run other commands otherwise we would have to control c kill the service in order to do anything else so this this d stands for detach so it's basically going to be like run it'll start and run it in the background of our terminal session here. All right, so detach. Uh, the other thing you always want to do is give it a name. We're just going to name it Gonic2. Can't name it something that you have already named the same thing. And I already have a Gonic, so we're going to name this Gonic2. All right, now we're going to expose the port. Now this wants to use port 80, but I've already have a service running on port 80. Port 80 is actually what the uh, Open Media Vault web interface runs on. So we're going to pick a different port. Can't pick a port that you're you're already using either. And then we're gonna send port 6776 to port 80 in the container. And then we need to um, pass some volume through. So I always put, all right, I'm looking at this right here, the data directory. Um, so if there's a settings directory or a data directory or anything like that for a Docker container, I always store that in its own folder under a Docker folder and then the name of the service. Now the next thing here is the path to music. This is where your music files are all stored. So that this right here, shared folders slash music, this is where all 
my music is stored. And we're going to pass that through to slash music. Now, these other two I don't have podcasts. Let's see, transcode covers. This, this you could likely just, I would put, so this one here. If it's a cache, I would I would put it in this this folder up here, and then maybe a cache folder inside that one, like that. Okay. So uh, let's see. We have everything good set a time zone. Uh, so that would be an environment variable. Z equals America, Chicago should work. Chicago. And what else we have here? This stuff, you set the following two sections if you've enabled jukebox. I don't intend on, on using jukebox. And I do not feel most most people would have a need for that, so we're going to skip that section. If you do uh, need to have jukebox mode set up, this would be pretty easy to, to do here, but I'm not going to have anything, any... Uh, speakers actually plugged in to the hardware of the server so i'm not not going to set that up I, again i do not feel most people are going to be doing that for that are watching this series and that should be pretty much it then we just got to give it the image here so And if it doesn't already have it, it's going to download it. I think it might already have it. It already had it. So if it didn't have this image already, it would have downloaded it and then basically done the same thing. So now this this service should be up and running. So we didn't get any error messages or anything like that. Now, of course, we can check it for uh, sudo docker. Yes, that's going to give us a list of all the containers that are running we can see Ghanic 2 was created 22 seconds ago it's been up 20 seconds and it's running off of this port 6776 so if we go ahead and type in 6776 there we go this this is the servant that's how easy it was just one command one command and we have a service set up that's what makes Docker so great. Oh, I'm just looking to see if it, it didn't say anything about setting up a user. Okay, right here, default login is admin, admin. So we can log in. And right now you can see this is one page, just like the one of the instance that I actually use here. Now this one uh, has nothing in it, so this is what you'd be seeing after you set it up for the first time. You would be able to uh, put your API key from Last.fm if you want to set up Scrabbling or Listen Brains here. Uh, you can create a user. Now a good idea is to change your username to something else. Maybe not literally, but... And your password. It's a good idea to change your password to something else. And then you could click scan now. And that's going to take possibly a long time. It depends on how big your music collection is. If you have a large music collection, this could... And your hardware, how fast your hardware is, how big your music collection is. So if you have a big music collection, generally it's going to take longer. If you have a small one, it's going to be quicker. You can set up transcoding device profiles. So here you give it a client name. 
uh, you you choose the format that it's going to use and then hit save you can add podcasts here and you can upload playlists there so it's very basic and it's and if you don't have a need for uh, such low system resource you're probably better off honestly going with something a little more user friendly like Navidrome or one of those other alternatives airsonic um, once they get their ui up to date if you don't have a need like i do f f for efficiency those other options might be a little bit better because you can see here I, I know for a fact in aerosonic you basically just click your client name from a drop down and here it's saying you need to check the gonic logs to go and retrieve that information and type it in here which is what i actually did if we go back to my running instance you can see i typed in ultrasonic set it to opus hit save and for that and to check the logs i mean you can do it through the terminal you can do it through your open media vault web interface here you can check the logs in that the way i do it is through dazzle which this is another service that shows you a very easy way to get log files for all your docker instances and so if you just went here and then click on Gonic, now I, we haven't connected any client to this yet, so there's not going to be any client inf information in here. You can see the things that we have done, though, change the uh, user username there. Um, let's, let's go to my Gonic that I actually have connected stuff to. So we can see username Tony right here. And then C, which I'm assuming stands for Client Ultrasonic. So I copied this and pasted it in here. Oh, jeez. Or typed it in there. Shows my output and hit save. So... Yeah, that's Gonic. So yeah, that does it for this video. I think, um, yeah, with this video, we've seen how easy it is to get a Docker container up and running. And that, like I was saying earlier, some containers rely on other Docker containers, and you got to link to them and they're a little more difficult or they have more vi environmental variables or mounts to pass through but basically to get a docker container up and running or a docker service up and running it's one command it's super easy like i said it's almost going to get repetitive that part so we're, we're gonna once we get a little more familiar with Docker and maybe some other Docker commands, we're going to start breezing through that, that part of it. It's just jumping right into the uh, setting up or config side of the service because we do have a lot of services running in Docker containers. And, and my plan is now that we have a couple of services set up, we have DocuWiki uh, from episode two we have Gonic from this episode here uh, how, how do you access these services from outside of your home well uh, I, I think I don't know if we want to touch on that right now or if I'll just save it I think I'm going to go ahead and save that for the next video we will go ahead and I think we're going to go ahead with WireGuard for the next video and give my thoughts on different ways that you could do it and the way that I do it and the reason for why I do it. So that'll do it for this video. I th Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.